Good evening. Today we gather virtually to pray evening prayer for the fourth Sunday of Lent. We also will have a time of adoration as well as benediction. And we begin. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for forty days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, I know that recent events have upended our normal routines. Even our yearly Lent practices have been affected. Instead of choosing how we increase our prayer, how we fast, and how we help others, God has taken us into the desert to be with Him. We now find ourselves in the uncomfortable position of not being in control. Not that we ever were. So what do we do? First, we don't give up on prayer. Although we may be disheartened and we cannot gather together in community, God is still calling us to spend time with Him. We can continue to pray for an end to abortion during these 40 days. We can spend more time listening to God through spiritual reading. We can take advantage of religious programming on TV or the internet. And most importantly, we can pray for each other at this difficult time. Second, 
we fast. While we trust that God is in control and that we have faith that he will protect us, he has also given man the gift of reason in order for our doctors and scientists to be able to understand and advise how to best deal with this situation. And so we take their advice as we fast from public liturgy and our normal routines. Finally, we care for each other. We check on our neighbors and friends. We follow the instructions of the experts. We only purchase what we need at the store. And we share with those who don't have. And we support those who have lost their source of livelihood. It is not the Lent we planned. It is not the Lent we wanted. But it is the Lent we have been given. We thank God for this time with him in the desert. And we remain open to what he wants to teach us. Trust and walk with our Savior. We'll make it through. We now take some time for private adoration.
Lord God. You are the eternal light which illumines the hearts of good people. Help us to love you, to rejoice in your glory, and so to live in this world is to avoid harsh judgment in the next. May we come to see the light of your countenance. Happy the man who shows mercy for the Lord's sake. He will stand firm forever. Those things which God foretold through his prophets concerning the sufferings that Christ would endure have been fulfilled. Christ suffered for you and left you an example to have you follow in his footsteps. He did no wrong. No deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he was made to suffer, he did not counter with threats. Instead, he delivered himself up to the one who judges justly. In his own body, he brought your sins to the cross, so that all of us, dead to sin, could live in accord with God's will. By his wounds, you were healed. Glory to the Father and to the Son to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Those things which God foretold through his prophets concerning the sufferings that Christ would endure have been fulfilled. While all the runners in the stadium take part in the race, the award goes to one man. In that case, run so as to win. Athletes deny themselves all sorts of things. They do this to win a crown of leaves that withers. But we, a crown that is imperishable. I do not run like a man who loses sight of the finish line. I do not fight as if I were shadow boxing. What I do is discipline my own body and master it, for fear that after having preached to others, I myself should be rejected. Listen to us, O Lord, and have mercy, for we have sinned against you. Listen to us, O Lord, and have mercy, for we have sinned against you. Christ Jesus, hear our humble petitions, for we have sinned against you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Listen to us, O Lord, and have mercy, for we have sinned against you. My son, you have been with me all the time, and everything I have is yours. But we had to feast and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost to us, and now has been found. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. 
He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My son, you have been with me all the time, and everything I have is yours. But we had to feast and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost to us and now has been found. Let us give thanks continually to Christ, our teacher and our head, who came to serve and to do good to all. In humility and confidence, let us ask him, Come, Lord, to visit your family. Lord, be present to the bishops and priests of your church, who share your role as head and shepherd. May they lead your people to the Father under your guidance. Come, Lord, to visit your family. May your angel be with all who travel, to keep them safe in soul and body. Come, Lord, to visit your family. Teach us to serve the needs of others, and to be like you, who came to serve, not to be served. Come, Lord, to visit your family. Grant that in the human family, brother may always help brother, so that with your assistance, it may be a city compact and strong. Come, Lord, to visit your family. Have mercy on all the departed. Bring them to the vision of your glory. Come, Lord, to visit your family. We also continue to pray for all those affected by the coronavirus, as well as those that are working to prevent the disease from further spreading. We pray, come Lord, to visit your family. We pray for all the parishioners of Mary Queen of the Apostles, those who have asked for our prayers, and those who need our prayers but have not asked. We also remember all those who have asked us to pray for them, in our families, our friends, and our acquaintances. We pray, come Lord, to visit your family. And finally, we pray for your intentions. We pray, Come, Lord, to visit your family. And now we pray in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen.
You have given them bread from heaven, having within it all sweetness. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as a memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of the sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, virgin and mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Jesus, how often I think that I am too busy to pray. My days are overloaded, and yet you surely don't expect me to be so preoccupied. How can I not have the time to think of you? You are always at my side, Jesus. You alone are my strength, my courage, my support. I want to make a habit, Jesus, of speaking to you as a friend. And so, from the bottom of my heart, I want to say simply, Jesus, I love you. When I am tired, help me to continue to say, Jesus, I love you. When I find it hard to forgive, I need only to repeat, Jesus, I love you. When darkness comes on me and I don't know where you are, I will call on you and say, Jesus, I love you. My daily tasks will become easier 
and my work will become a prayer which says, Jesus, I love you. What trouble can shake me? What suffering overcome me? If I can always repeat, Jesus, I love you. For the joys you give me, for the graces you shower upon me, my thank you will always be, Jesus, I love you. And simply to please you, for no other reason, let me often say, Jesus, I love you. And when the evening of my life comes and you invite me home, let me say one last time before I depart, Jesus, I love you. And when you call me for judgment, be merciful, Lord, because you know how many times I have said, Jesus, I love you. Oh. 